Yes, yeah, so, so welcome to Vasily's Garden, folks. Today we're talking citrus trees, in particular potted stuff. Uh, we'll touch base on the ones in the ground as well, but these ones here around our fire pit, as you know in the past I've shown you when we've had all that heavy rain, three of them were underwater, literally underwater. Uh, the other four here, well they'll get drenched on as well, but we've got them in these grow bags or grow pots. This is what I've been uh, growing them in for the last couple of years. Now the challenges we have out here, as you all know by now, if not, I'll explain them again. We've got radical weather, and that's typical across most states at the moment, but in particular where we are, the weather gets really cold. So this morning it was about two degrees. Now it's meant to be summer. Now it's probably sitting around 19, 18, 19 degrees with the sun out, but as soon as the sun goes under or behind the clouds, it drops quite quickly. So we feel the cold breeze coming through and citrus trees don't like the cold uh, full stop, especially the high winds. So these ones here, well, considering the spot they're in, they're actually well protected by comparison to other areas. Uh, we're looking at a mandarin tree here with the leaf curl. If you're wondering what's going on now, this leaf curl is basically weather caused and it's quite typical of mandarins to have that. I'm looking around to the other one. There's another one down there that's got a little bit of it. But have a look at the tree just generally overall. It's growing in the bag here. It's time to actually replenish them. And I say to feed your plants every three months. Obviously in the growing season, give them a good feed, especially when they're fruiting, uh, but don't do a high nitrogen, too high nitrogen base, because it can cause the flowers to drop off or you get blossom end rot in the case of tomatoes. So a balanced fertilizer is important. And again, keep it natural, keep it organic, keep it something real, something that's straight from nature's own backyard or from the backside of four-legged animals. So it's got to be composted, it can't be fresh. And you want to top dress your fruit trees like that. No, it's not just citrus, all plants in fact, whether you've got roses, and we'll do a segment on our standard roses, they're all finishing and they need to be pruned back and they too need to be fed. Now, this tree here, well, all of them in fact, but by example, let's talk about this one. We've got tape around the trunk because we've got rabbits here and they love to gnaw on the trunk itself and they like to dig down below here and that's why I've got the tape on it. Now you don't have to use insulation tape, you can use a non-sticky tape, uh, something like a tree guard or tree band or just something like even floral tape, florist tape, that doesn't have any stick on it, just tie the end up properly. It's worked a treat on this one here because they nearly ring barked it. Now in spite of all the rain we've had and all the madness, the trees are holding a wonderful green on them and that's because in the past I did top dress them with compost and I did add our superfood and black grid. For those who haven't tried it, it's probably one of the best if not the best fertilizer in the market if I don't say so myself. Now this here, down here, have a look, have a look, have a look. Look how dry and arid it is. Look at it, it's just become dry again on the surface. Really crusting over and we've got some new growth. So what are we looking out for? Let me have a sit down here. So we're looking at breaking the crust here on the, on the soil, not too deep because the root system is quite shallow. They're very fibrous roots. All we're trying to do is break the water tension. So when we water it, it doesn't bead on top. It actually soaks straight in and gets down into the root ball itself. Because a lot of times when the soil crusts over on pots, you'll find that when you water, it may sit there or pull for a while, then all of a sudden it disappears. And if you're not paying attention, it may not actually soak into the soil, but rather down the sides, down the side walls and run out through the base. So the tree in the middle never gets its hydration. And if that's happening to you, the best thing to notice is if the tree is wilting or any plant that is, smaller plants will wilt quite quickly. So when you hydrate them, it sits upright and all of a sudden as the weather warms up, it dehydrates straight away. That's an indicator to tell you that you haven't really soaked the soil that well. Another thing to look out for is suckers from the rip ball. Now this is grafted. We're talking about a rootstock here, wild rootstock, citrus rootstock. And sometimes it wants to shoot off its own roots or shoots, I should say, not roots. And that's what's happened down here. They've been eaten off kindly by the rabbits, but we're going to take them off completely like that. And that's what we're talking about, these little suckers. Take them off um, from the base because if you don't, they'll start to grow and eventually the tree will die on top. Well, not die, but not be as productive. And you'll find the rootstock taking off and becoming its own righteous tree. Now, 
it is time to feed. Every three months, I said so, in the growing season, give them a good feed. And what I'm going to suggest here for pots like this, in this case here, this needs a top dress. And I'm going to use our planting mix. It's somewhere around. Oh, there it is. It's right in front of me. That planting mix. So that's got all our wonderful organic matters in it, mixed together beautifully, perfectly, and it'll be a treat for the tree. And it's especially the black green and the superfood is what it needs. But if you're checking out your pots and you can see that the soil's quite good still on top, uh, and it's not dehydrated and becoming arid looking like this, then maybe you don't need a top dressing with a mix like that there. You can just use the superfood and the black grit combined, and that way you're replenishing the nutrients, the bacteria in the soil, you're feeding that all up, and your tree starts to take that up and continues growing beautifully like this. So a pot of this size here, these are 500 mil diameter pot, you know, about a you know, 20 mil, 40 mil, 50 mil covering is all it needs. And then as you water, it'll absorb the nutrients and flush through down the base. And that way you get rid of the crusting over on the surface, the dehydration, and I'm seeing ants in here. I'm wondering if they're nesting in the soil. It may be the case. We'll just tease it a little bit more here for a second. Yeah, I've disturbed them already. So they're not in the ground. If you're noticing ants on your, have I got my glasses here? Again, I forgot my glasses. If you've got ants traveling on your tree, chances are you may have scale on there as well. So that's another nasty little pest that can cause a little bit of damage to your tree. It sucks the sap out of the tree and it causes sooty mold to develop. And if that happens, it eventually suffocates the branch and stops the photosynthesis to develop and the tree starts to drop its leaves and that way it starts going backwards. Let's have a look closely. I think we have got scale on it here. There we are, folks, look at that. And the ant is there as well. You know what it's doing now? It's actually farming it. Yeah, come over here. Let's have a look at this little critter. So what you see here, folks, what we've got here is a little scale. Now that coating there, or that shell, I'll start again. This is what we call scale. Now they come in different colours and sizes as well. So they'll be small, medium and large. We've got flies as well flying around. And they also come in a white, brown and a black scale. They can be soft and hard as well. Now this one, because I haven't got my glasses on, I think it's a semi-soft or hard one anyway. What we know is that if it's alive, we'll get something squeezing out of it. So what we do is turn the fingernail on the other side. Are we ready for this, folks? Are you ready? See the juice coming out of that? Now, if it's... The other different scales actually bring out some blood as well. So that juice there basically tells you it's alive. Now, that, that shell that you saw there is a protection hood, let's call it, or a little house where the insect lives on the underside. And what the ants do, they walk up and down the tree searching the scale and they actually tap on them, cause them to excrete the honeydew, which is what they want because it's quite sweet, like nectar or sugar. And they actually farm them too, so they cause them to multiply, they move them around if they can, and they get the tree to be covered in it completely because it's basically a food source for them. So that's what the ants do, along with all the other type of insects we've spoken about in the past. So guess what? We've got scale on our little tree. That means the tree's healthy, well, or either that or the trees aren't healthy. Well, at the moment it looks quite healthy and if I do nothing about it, it's going to become unhealthy. So we have to treat this in a couple of ways. We can spray it with our CGWS because the fruit has set. Have a look at this. We've got lots of fruit on here. All the little buds there will have set fruit, or the actual little fruits, and it's all over the tree. Now, over time, the tree may shed some of those, if not half of them, and keep the remaining to grow nice and big. And the way we help the tree along with that is a good feed, as, as I just mentioned there with the planting mix. But to treat the tree now, we need to spray it with our CGWS or Eco Oil. Now it's your choice there which one you want to use. Eco Oil, Eco Oil will suffocate it and the CGWS will stop it from multiplying as well. Um, the difference is one leaves a white residue on the surface, which is an outer uh, coating, or we can call it a protection layer, um, whereas the uh, Eco oil dries clean on it. Now, another thing you can do with these here, and this is what I've got to do with all these trees, because if one tree's got it, all of them have got it. We've got to put a tree band around there. Now, using the tape there to protect it from the rabbits has worked the treat. All I need to do is apply some tree paste on this as well. First, apply a little bit more masking tape here, folks, because we've got a few gaps in between, and I don't like applying it directly onto the trunk. So just like that there. And the tree guard is a paste. Don't mind the lid on this, I've broken it. It's a nice soft gooey paste and you don't need a lot, just like that. That's all we need, a little teaspoons worth for a small trunk like this. Even that's more than enough. 
and apply it all the way around near the top section of the tape because it will run down as the temperature warms up. It becomes a little bit more runny. Now you can see there's an ant coming down here. Have a look, have a look. Can you see it? No, it's on the other side. It's gone around somewhere. The little bugger's caught up in the tree now. This is a barrier, basically a ring of shield to stop any ants travelling up and down because they basically go up the top, they farm the little um, insects and then they bring down all the honeydew, the sugar, back to the nest to feed the, the colony. Now by doing this, you stop them from farming it and then by doing a couple of sprays on the tree to control it with Eco Oil or CGWS, you get rid of your scale as well and that way your tree lives to enjoy another growing season. Look at this, I found the black one folks. This is a black scale, long, different to the other one. Look on the underside, this is what they look like. Well, let me keep it still for you. Now I can't see it clearly myself, but I'm sure the camera's able to zoom in a bit better there. I can see all that liquidy stuff there, that's the honeydew. And in there is basically the insect, and the outside is a scale, shell. So, like that, there we are. Look at that. Yeah, let's go to the next phase. We turn it back over. Bear with me, bear with me. Don't lose it, Vasily. Like that, let go. Ah, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Relax, I got it. I'm not that bad. I'm blind, but I'm not completely blind. Oh, now I am. <laughs> There's plenty more where that came from. Here's another one. You can hand pick them. Oh, they're just falling off the tree now. They've taken wind of me. <laughs> oh, bugger this. Here's another one. Look at that. I don't have to look too far. This is a big chunky one. Oh, yeah. Peel him off. Can you see that one there? Look at that. All right. I'm going to put him on my nail again. There we are. Nice clean nails. Look how thick he is. Look. Look at the size of that one there. That's a big chunky scale. Now there's not a lot on the tree. There's probably, oh, probably for the size of the tree, a couple of dozen on the, all over. You can easily pick them off like this. And now we do the squash. Oh. Get your glasses, eh? I'm hearing you. I can hear you. Yes, I can. I'm going to squash this one. See, when you squash it, liquid oozes out. Sometimes red stuff, like we call it blood, oozes out as well. But when you do spray it, after one or two applications, when you go to squash them, then it should turn to powder. And that's the indicator to tell you you've actually knocked out the scale. So the scale may remain on the tree. By testing it like this, you'll know whether it's alive or dead. Anyway, let's get back to the base here. So that's scale on your citrus trees. And another thing to look out for while we're doing this is citrus gall wasp. A lot of you have got citrus gall wasp on your trees and that needs to be treated as well. CGWS, this is our planting mix, folks. So one bag, a 30 litre bag. I've put three scoops so far. I'm gonna put four scoops on it. Top dress this beautifully like that, there we are. So that's, oh yeah, geez, that smells good. I can smell it. Just top dress it like this, and that way you're giving your tree another good feed. Now, if you don't need to top dress it because your soil's really good on the surface, you still need to feed it. You should get some black grit and superfood. That's a combo that we've got available. And just give a couple of handfuls, two or three handfuls around the base like that, and then water it in. So every time you water it, a slow release of nutrients goes back down to the root ball, and your tree benefits. And the black grit is the secret to all this fruit. Have a look at that. Can you see all that fruit coming on there? Surely it's not going to keep all of them. And I'm just showing you one little cluster because there's more on that side. And every little bunch on the tips is pretty much like this all over the tree, folks. Here, have a look at this stem down here as well. There's just fruit everywhere anyway. Look, that's what happens with black root. The calcium, the magnesium is released. Last one. Keep in mind, the healthier the tree you have in your garden, the more resilient it is against being attacked by pests and diseases. Not all the time can you protect the tree just by keeping it healthy like that. You'll have to take some action as far as protecting it by spraying it, pruning it and fertilising it. Here's the other problem that occurs on citrus trees. You can see this, it looks quite healthy on the top side of the leaf because this tree is healthy, lots of new growth and flowers, but we've got leaf miner on the underside there. And that's another major pest that occurs on citrus trees. It attacks the new growth and it causes it to curl over. So this is an old leaf that was attacked earlier in the season, but the tree has been resilient enough to be able to tolerate that 
and it's only the one leaf at the moment that I found and there are ants on this tree as well but at a, at a glance you can't even tell that what I can tell are rabbits attacking the trunk have a look at this this one hasn't been wrapped around and that's exactly what they do to it and again this one here's got some roots suckering up as well right from the root ball look at this the soil's been kicked out of here by the rabbits this has been dug you see how loose that is there you can see it's firm up here loose down here they've been digging down here and on that side look at that exposing all the roots so we're going to remove all that you can cut it off or just peel them off because they're really soft and juicy there's something down here yep gone and this needs to be topped up don't leave your roots exposed like this and the trunk as well wrap some tape around it i'm using masking tape and we're going to put some paste on this one as well citrus trees what to look out for citrus gall wasp scale leaf miner rabbits <laughs> snails and obviously fertilizing them like that so putting the tree guard so spray them with cgws as a preventative shield of armor to protect it against citrus gall wasp you don't have to cut off all the galls you can remove some of them if you like because otherwise you'll destroy the whole tree if you've got a lot of galls on your tree and again the scale spray with eco oil or cgws and feed and get something organic if you can't get our click and collect planting mix you can get our superfood and black grid is available to be delivered anywhere in australia and our website don't forget about that one vasilisgarden.com our 500 dollars garden christmas hamper is going to go off this christmas day folks entries closed on the 24th vip members are included and all new vip subscribers plus if you shop online up to 30 bucks you go straight into the draw for a chance to win yourself a wonderful Christmas hamper. Until then, from Eva Silly, Maresi, see you tomorrow.